Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Witness Day. In today's episode, we're going to discuss a very interesting topic of mobile as a PC replacement. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, why the hell do you want to do that? Well, simple uh, in simplest sense, you have to understand. At the very beginning of the, the smartphone craze, the processors that were used in our smartphone, they were nowhere near. Like at that time, uh, the RAM was counted in like megabytes, like, you know, 5 to 12 megabytes of RAM. But nowadays, our uh, RAM is like in gigabytes, as in 12 gigabytes. And I'm using only 16 gigabytes in my desktop. So you can understand, like, it's getting very big. And in terms of processor also, it went from like a single core affair to double core to eight core so sometimes you can have 12 cores and all that so mobile processor at this point in time is powerful enough now android in terms of operating system is like how powerful this operating system is in terms of this market share it has exceeded windows which was the previous game so that is a very big step that means there are more android operating system than there are windows operating system that means almost every tom dick and harry has experience with this now, uh, we have it with us all the time, like most of us have are glued to our phone one way or the another. It's either always on your face or in your pocket. So you already have it, like it's with you and it's cheaper. You have to understand it in this way. Like let's say the best uh, phone you want to have, uh, smartphone, it's generally, let's say, uh, less than $1,000. Well, practically speaking, it's less than $500, but you get the point. Like let's say $1,000 is a cap. Now, here's the deal. In computer industry, like in desktop, I'm not even talking um, like, you know, best of the best hardware. Like that could be the price of a just a graphics card and i'm not talking you know best of the bright uh, best out there like that would be like you know uh, okay high end ish kind of thing and you have to understand when you have a processor you have a, a good motherboard you have a good graphics card your parcel like your budget goes up way too drastically like two thousand dollar to five thousand dollar is nothing for a desktop pc so it's cheaper relatively speaking now can you do this directly with your mobile phone? Short answer, no. Why? Well, uh, your mobile has uh, one serious issue. That is, it does not have an output or an input. It just have combined both of them. So the touch screen where you see things is the output device, but where you tap it, it becomes an input device. Problem with that, your hand itself is offset most of the time. It's like when you have keypad, like you are not seeing that whole section. That whole section has been blocked up. So problem is either it's not the best input device, it's not the best output device. So it's not like uh, compared to your uh, keyboard. So uh, for that reason, we have to have something separate. We have to have something dedicated. You have to have keyboard and mouse. Now be mindful, mouse does not work with uh, iOS system. Even though they are al allowing it in the basically iOS for tablet division, they are not allowing it for iPhone. So uh, your mileage may vary. Flat out, uh, mouse does not work with Apple system. However, Android has native support for it, but does not mean that it will work with every application or it will work the way you want it to. It will work. It's just uh, you may think like, okay, I'm going to select something, right click, copy, paste. Yeah, that's that's not how it works like you can select things but copy pasting and all that that's very difficult so key, keyboard support is like uh, around the board that's the that's the biggest thing like uh, many times you have to just type down some notes or uh, reply a big email and all that having a small keyboard like this or foldable keyboards which are quite amazing nowadays you can get them for quite cheap and it has like even touchpad built into it so you can do a lot of work like actual work like if you all you have to do is like you know type down notes and things of that nature you can do a lot of work utilizing these things now you can get to solve the keyboard mouse issue without expending too much money however you have to understand this the biggest problem like even if you did this like let's say your mobile supported it and the app that you use most of the time uh, supports all what you wish to do awesome yes if you directly focused on that uh, four inch or six inch mobile phone your eye is gonna hurt a lot like uh, think of this way like even though this has same resolution as a my mobile phone full hd uh, my eyes can travel from this point to that point to that point to this point like my eyes have a lot of travel but when you are look focused on a mobile phone unless you have like directly it glued to your uh, face like a google cardboard you you literally have to like read so closely that's a very fatiguing over time it will hurt you so we have to have a dedicated display external display so that's what the first thing we are doing we're just turning our mobile phone into a simple uh, cpu basically it's just like you do the processing let display take care of the output part let keyboard mouse take care of the input part not do everything all in one so you can utilize your normal tv or a monitor now uh, 
these two are bare minimum like you have to have an external display for ability to use it any long term and you have to have uh, you know key, uh, keyboard and mouse for actual utilization however if you are serious about this if you're like okay i really want to try this like many people are trying to do this because of minimalism they just want to have simple ideas they're like i don't want to like you know come home and like you know start my computer and all that or have an entire desktop or have a laptop or have a tablet i just want to have one thing in those sort of scenarios if you are like that serious you have to get into uh, power plus port adapters basically hub you have to get something like this now these are available for um, many specific phones like uh, how i make some of the interesting ones samsung have a very dedicated one which has like you know from your ethernet to your usb to all uh, charging systems and all that and that is quite uh, necessary so you don't want to be like okay i just plugged my phone and, uh, and now i'm utilizing my uh, basically bluetooth keyboard problem is what happens if it gets discharged it will happen so uh, if you want to be a reliable system you have to use wired systems you don't have to worry about mouse now then the problem becomes like you have have only one port in your mobile phone so uh, this sort of hub becomes quite useful so you can have a display you can charge the mobile phone while it's working so you don't have to worry about like hey uh, my mobile phone is like you know it's gonna die so i have only one hour of work left uh, i can only do one hour of work so in those sort of scenarios you have to understand like this becomes a really useful tool or for most people who are only doing either content consumption either doing just a lot of write-up basically they have to write up a lot of things in those sort of scenarios right now as of now as in 2019 you can easily do it right now you can flat out remove your desktop like you have to get a hub and you have to make sure whether your mouse uh, basically keyboard mouse is supported with your mobile phone and like you know you have to do some testing but right now it can be done so people who do just lightweight uh, basically accounting and all that or uh, people who do a lot of write-up vlog write-ups and all that easily right now hr easily right now they can do this flat out you don't even have to worry about those things so it is doable but you just have to uh, pay more attention if you want to do this seriously to the hub part you can buy asus gaming phone which has a very uh, interesting hub design where it has like you know display output uh, multiple usb so you can like you know copy paste from uh, you know portable hard drives and all that because it has power input so these are the tools that you need to truly make your mobile phone so you can have the dream of like you know going to the office and just putting out your mobile phone and working and then uh, putting it around and just going to home so it can be done right now if your workload is not very specific now let's talk about the software now again hardware itself is not good enough you have to understand you must have synergy between hardware and software if you don't well you did so right now that's the biggest problem with android like you can see like flat or this is a samsung desk uh, this is a hawaii uh, uh, desktop environment uh, so these are quite like uh, it looks like a desktop that's the whole point like the first thing you will see oh it's like i can have two independent windows and it has a taskbar it has uh, icons and all that it looks like a desktop it is a desktop problem is these are made by uh, the companies not made by google so that's a problem like this one will not work with this one or this one will not work with this one so you will you can literally have uh, different experiences so you like hey i use the google uh, samsung one it was quite amazing i use the hawaii one but i like the fact that they turn your mobile phone into a touchpad so you can have like a normal keyboard and just on the side instead of getting a mouse you can just have a normal touchpad so it's quite amazing so you have to understand it's not here so uh, they i think they are adding it with a firmware and all that it can be done it's just problem is somebody has to be there like on top is like okay like how it is in terms of a computer it's like windows is that you know overlord it's like hey this is the software protocol this is how you're supposed to be and then the hardware manufacturer take care of the hardware part and the app developer take care of the uh, basically requirements for the windows so windows acts as a mediator between these two aspects so we do not have that yet so google has to jump into this google have to develop a uh, windows environment uh, basically port and port desktop environment so that is the biggest problem right now and apps have to be developed in such a way that they have dual outputs basically dual mode basically mobile mode and desktop mode now you may think uh, your mobile phone uh, has enough information but think of this way like if you are dealing with youtube and all that like i am doing this uh, when i whenever i open uh, analytics app in my basically uh, mobile phone the most of the uh, detail is very small amount of detail i can see like in at a glance i can only see a small amount but it's not about the lack of pixels because you have to understand like full hd is full hd so i have the amount same amount of pixel but the amount of uh, information that i can receive is very low and i cannot change it i cannot be like okay just make the font smaller it simply does not have enough rows of it like in terms of my desktop i can have like you know a little bit of information here a little bit of information here 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 i can have a lot of information in here but mobile phone will not allow you to do that best it will do like it will shrink uh, the font size and you will have like you know a bit more linear option so it does not utilize the display as it's supposed to for a desktop application so that is why like and there is a good reason for it like when you are using your thumb uh, the desktop experience will be bad for you so 
in those sort of scenario it does make sense but it has to have dual mode for making a you know mobile phone into a true desktop replacement so there's a lot of improvement uh, needed for the software side now let's talk about the hardware like again software and hardware both has to work now you have to understand the first thing people will think can it ever be as powerful as a uh, basically a desktop pc short answer no just no physics does not allow it it's not about uh, politics it's not about uh, you know trade uh, regulations it's not about tele technology it's not about patents physics does not allow you to do that think of it this way if i tell you there is a 10 nanometer uh, processing unit that's the whole point the transistor that you have is 10 nanometer how much of it can you pack in this small one versus this big one versus this giant one you will flat out say this giant one will have more and that's true that's the whole point the silicon that is used in your mobile processor is sometimes more or less the exact same one that may be used for uh, basically desktop processor and all that and even if you were like no no mobile processor is reaching to 5 nanometer and desktop only reaches to 7 nanometer it has so much more room space and heat dip, uh, dissipation that is very critical that it can truly do this like it can actually uh, utilize the technology it has to give you a context of this uh, think of it in this way uh, mobile um, basically the desktop environment used to have 2 gigahertz to uh, 3 gigahertz very early on very early on we had but it took 10 years to only reach us to 4 gigahertz now here's the very early overclockers they were utilizing fancy cooling systems or liquid nitrogen cooling to reach 8 gigahertz so why don't we have in this is 10 years ago so why don't we have like you know this whole transition to like you know our processor being faster by default the reason is like if you take 2 gigahertz processor you, let's say its heat output is 100 watt you're like okay cool awesome uh, let's uh, double it let's go to 4 gigahertz so and i'll put a beefier cooler for 200 watts that's not how it works like it your height will go from uh, 200 watts to 500 watt when you double the frequency the frequency exponentially increases your heat output that is why even though the snapdragon processor can easily run like it has the capability to run at 4 gigahertz they will not allow you to do that simply because it will heat up the phone and yeah uh, there are some uh, people who try to make a uh, gaming consoles out of that and the first thing they did is just plonk a giant heat sink on the processor and it does work like if you can cool the processor Snapdragon can go to very high speeds, uh, even Exynos, even the uh, Kyren system. But again, they are designed for mobile, so they do not allow you to do that. So same technology is used for your mobile processor and your uh, basically uh, desktop PC. So inherently, you cannot expect any time where like, you know, or mobile has just, uh, you know, replaced the desktop. That will never happen so because you have to like, it's simple physics. Like how much magic can you put into one liter bottle, one liter bottle, how much magic you can put into two liter bottle, again, two liter. So that is why hardware is simple. We will never have a scenario where you're like, you know, quote unquote pro performance that Apple gimmick. Yeah, no, just, just no, you can say it's better than my past that's absolutely true it's like mobile phone has come a long way but uh, can i expect to see like 4 gigahertz uh, you know processor on mobile anytime soon no like again i hope it will happen but i am pretty sure it will take very long time like before that we will have like you know 24 cores and all that so that is the hardware side of it now can in future for most people like who do not do very heavy things like uh, they are not doing programming they are not doing video editing and uh, they are like you know just average average joe basically can they utilize their mobile phone as a desktop replacement permanently short answer it requires certain things the first thing that has that has to change is basically cloud computing has to come to fruition right now i told you like if you are doing lightweight work it's quite easy right now now if you want to do something heavy you if you have cloud computing it remo removes the uh, biggest bottleneck of the processor processor can now heck it could tone down like you could have a scenario where it's like okay you are uh, you know connecting in a dock now it has a wired connection optical connection to let's say the server it has low enough latency it's gonna down clock itself and all it's acting as a, like you know a bridge between the server computers and your uh, input and output device so in those sort of scenario it can do heavy things like heck you could directly edit 8k video files because the file being uh, all your mobile is doing is just converting file from one format to another live conversion and it's just sending it to the server server is doing the transporting the editing and all that so you can easily do that you can do that today it's just uh, the in network infrastructure is not good enough so once we have cloud computing sorted out right now we have cloud storage sorted out that's what your email is so cloud uh, storage we got that but cloud computing we still have some uh, room to grow so once that happens, yeah, then at that point, people will be like, yeah, I just bring my phone. You can literally expect to see this in like offices and especially startups and all that. They will just like, yeah, we cannot afford to buy like, you know, fancy powerful computers and all that. We're just going to utilize, let's say, Amazon Web Services and all that. It's just plonk it down there. They're just going to have a client on the mobile phone and just keyboard mouse. Awesome. 
example so cloud computing could make this very uh, quick reality then applications have to be polished much more like flat out applications need uh, different kind of a mindset going around right now the applications are built for mobile phone it's like you know lightweight uh, they want to make it simple again that's awesome for mobile phone but for desktop it, it has to go in completely different direction then USB C is also a very critical key of this component because USB C has been built with a lot of uh, insight from all our previous mistakes. So this interface, specifically USB C four, basically four point oh standard, it will also have display input built into it. So that way you can have an easily scenario where you no longer have to worry about whether my mobile has uh, you know display out or not because the display output people wanted to do that. People wanted to make it absolute. It's just that it was an independent uh, what you call uh, uh, protocol. So you have to have a tv that will support it you have to have a mobile that supports it now it will be embedded in the usb itself like uh, if you have good usb controller by default it will have that utilizing it or not utilizing that is up to you so that will make it quite easy so you're just gonna have a future where it's just like usb c you plug it in your tv is connected and uh, right now you can do that with uh, let's say mini apple laptop and uh, lg monitors which has like usb c charging ability so basically you connect it on the same wire it's uh, receiving the display signal and charging the uh, laptop right now so it can easily charge your mobile so USB C can make this quite uh, uh, you know practical. Like where you every port all you have is just USB C. You don't have to worry about uh, many things like you know what port it is, what uh, you know some generation it is. Like whether it's a Display Port, whether it's HDMI, whether it's DVI, you don't have to worry about those things. So USB C could help us uh, move along that way. And unified architecture. Now this is the magical uh, bullet. Basically, uh, Windows did try that. You have to understand Windows was like uh, losing the market in terms of mobile, and they realized quite early on the biggest advantage they have compared to other things is they have the desktop environment what if they ported that desktop environment to the mobile environment and that was the project mobile uh, windows rt now problem with that is uh, the desktop environment that windows built was built for x86 architecture the intel's architecture and intel has only licensed x86 to uh, basically amd so amd and intel are the only company that can make x86 architecture and x86 is not something that like you can just change it's not one thing that you can change it's like if you change that you have to rebuild everything and i mean down to the kernel i mean down to every single driver have to be redone so windows did try that but it was not successful and they did not pour enough money into it like there is a point of brute force you can like force it to solve it and it can be done like because mo modern processes are beefy enough that most of the old applications can be run right now natively it does have enough what we call teraflops it has that it's not teraflops into mobile for processor it's just gigaflops but it can be done it's just that um somebody has to port the x86 into arm system that cannot be done however uh, linux have a uh, linux i'm saying uh, android has a native advantage here is that x86 uh, they do not have to suffer from x86 because the core architecture is linux which has been used in almost everything from arm architecture to x86 architecture so in tomorrow let's say the architecture grows to a point where it's like desktop only it can be done like uh, because the linux uh, backbone that is there it is easy to do not impossible easy to do so and what if some magical thing happens like uh, risk 5 takes off and like risk 5 was built as a uh, architecture replacement for x86 so and it has a lot of things that they learned from arm and uh, and everything else basically so it is designed from day one to be replacement for everything basically it can replace the arm low power division and it can replace the x86 in the server division so it let's say it takes off then they don't even have to worry about the kernel and all that they have to be like okay that's it this process and the, every application you will buy or every application you will select it will simply say yeah it will not work on mobile because it requires too much power or it will be like yeah mobile it will reduce the frame rate to let's say from 60 from your desktop to 50 if it detects your mobile uh, hardware is not enough so in those scenarios even porting won't be an issue it will simply throttle down the performance so we can see a few like, like i can envision a future because few things will definitely happen polishing app many many company have already started it cloud computing unstoppable at this point usb-c slowly but it's reaching and the moment us uh, usb-c comes to iphone which sooner or later it will come because it already came into ios it has only come to uh, imo um, imobile i'm saying just iphone uh, the moment it reaches there like usb-c will come absolute now unified architecture that's a bit tricky part but technically linux is already that so I can see a bright future where uh, most people can easily just like yeah i'm done with my mobile, uh, desktop or laptop mobile can be good enough yeah they will have their uh, tv or display and all that on they will have fancy docks but we can reach a point where this is like you know uh, desktops are only for people who are like you know doing very heavy application things or security intensive you don't want everything security based on cloud 
so this was my presentation on uh, basically using your mobile phone as a desktop displacement i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me uh, your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching